How many of you want to create rich, beautiful, reflective brunettes? Yes, yes, well stay tuned, right? And what I mean by rich, beautiful, reflective is how many of you want to create those really beautiful, rich brunettes, like really dark, like actual true brunettes, right? Like dark colors, but where you can actually see some reflect, where you can actually see some tone in it, right? That's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about some amazing, great launches that we have added to our brand new Matrix So Color portfolio. And I'm gonna share with you a technique that I use behind this chair in my salon day to day with my clients, which is a Matrix uh, Melt. So I'm super excited to share the Matrix Multi Melt. Um, and like I said, talk all things, these amazing, great launches. And when I talk about brunettes, what levels do our brunettes live at, right? When someone says, I want my hair to be brown, right? Well, when they say brown, well, there's a lot of levels of brown, right? Yes, come on in the chat, right? But when we think of brunettes, like what levels do brunettes live at? Write it in the chat, let me know. When you think of a brunette, what like level, what number comes to mind, right? Because when I think of brunettes, I mean, I think of, there's a big range of brunettes, but when I think of brunettes, I think of like, really beautiful like anything below a level six right level five level four and yes even a level three we forget that a level three that is our darkest brown level right beyond a level three which is a level two that's where we start getting into like the natural black and number one being the black right yes tony level five to two perfect you got it that's where we're at yes ashley four five and six and don't forget our level threes, right? Hi, Angela, right? We forget that at level three, even though it might appear black, it's not, that's gonna be our darkest level, right? So at Matrix, we have some amazing great launches, which is called the Triple Blend. And what this is, is there's three new shades, and they're not new, they're shades that we already have, but they're gonna live and exist in a darkest level three. And we have our three double ash, right there three red red right there and then we have our three red violet look at that right so this is part of our newest launch added to so color which is our triple blends shades right and these are three new shades that are going to be added uh, to our portfolio that we have existing which is going to be our So Color Permanent Hair Color, right? And when we're talking about um, So Color, what do we think about? We think of permanent color, right? But you know what, at Matrix, we truly believe we have products for any kind of hair, any kind of human, right? All hair, all human. So when we're talking about So Color, it's an amazing, great opportunity when we're thinking of working with permanent hair color, we're, we're thinking of like longevity, right? And I know we always know the rule, we think of back to beauty school, or wherever you learn to do hair color is depositing with permanent hair color, right? But at Matrix, it can totally be done because remember, our so color, permanent color is pre-bonded. So it's already gonna have that extra added protection. So you can feel very confident in depositing color with permanent color, right? When we're talking about a level three, right? Like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, level three being a darkest brown, and we're talking about brunettes today, but like actually rich brunettes, right? Like at our level three, four, and five, right? And a level six, it's still a, 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 a brown, it's still a brunette, but it starts getting into the lighter. But today we're talking about how to really create that really dark, rich, brunette but still have some reflectiveness to it where you're still able to see some color in it right where you don't have to go out into the parking lot with a mirror and be like oh can you see the color right where you're actually like holding the mirror and trying to get a little bit of the reflect so today we're going to talk about our amazing three new shades like i said the three double ash three red red and three red violet which are all part of our newest launch which is the Matrix Triple Blend added. So these are gonna be part of our So Color Permanent Hair Color Portfolio, right? And today, I'm going to demonstrate all three of them. Let me tell you, I truly, truly love all three of them. And for me, they're an amazing opportunity to really now create like a different color, right? 
How many of you sometimes behind the chair have your guest and they want it like a different color? And you're kind of like, I don't know, you know, like you're kind of stuck for ideas. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to create. Well, that's what I love about these three new shades added. Hello, Georgia. Uh, three new shades added to the Soul Color portfolio is like now I feel like I have like a new toy, right? Think of like many of you that have kids or you bought a kid a toy. They like love that toy for like, I mean, sometimes it's a one day only, but for a week, for a month. So that's how I feel right now with our new Matrix uh, Triple Blend Shades is this is like my new toy and I'm really loving it right now. And I want to share with you how you're going to love it. Right, so here I have my uh, my mannequin, and I'm going to be demonstrating how I'm going to be working with the three new triple blend shades using our Matrix Multi Melt. Right, so this is my before. Right, and you see she has a little bit of texture to her hair, and um, I'm going to be doing a Matrix Melt. So it's going to be a color melt. And I'm going to be melting all the three shades together. Right, but I wanted to show you her before, so you can see she's like naturally level four. And she has some old, like, highlighted pieces, some old balayage. Just imagine, think of someone that maybe, like, they're coming out of, like, winter. Their hair is just kind of, like, dull and blah, right? And you want to add a little bit of pop. You want to make it fresh. You want to make it rich. You want it, you want it to, like, look expensive. And why not? You want it to cost expensive, right? So you could definitely charge for this. So here you can see I've already done my mannequin. I have done where I pre-stretched her hair, right? When I'm working with curly hair, um, ideally I want them to come in like this, like the something the closest to their natural way or form they wear their 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 curl pattern. So I can kind of see how this is gonna like um, lay, right? So I can know where how far out I need to blend things, how far my color is gonna go. But you can see here, all I did was a pre-stretch. So all I did with that is I took a um, Denman brush and a blow dryer and I just lightly stretched it out, right? We're not looking to get like bone straight hair there, but um, I'm just looking to create that really beautiful uh, pre-stretch so that I can apply my color. Another thing I'm gonna share with you is you're probably looking at my mannequin like what's on her face. And for those of you who are joining who are educators or for any of you that ever have to prepare a mannequin for a presentation or for your salons, because that's an opportunity that we can create in our salons, is I've actually used, uh, since I'm applying color and I don't want to ruin this mannequin and I want it to stay beautiful and presentable for whatever I decide to use it, is I'm actually using our Matrix Overachiever 3-in-1 styling product which I applied all over her face her neck and around her ear and this is just a really great way so if you're creating something for a presentation for your salon something to showcase um, in your salon or if you have students or whatever the case may be for you educators this is a really great product to apply on the face and on your mannequin so as you apply color you don't ruin and you don't damage your mannequin and then you have it looking presentable for all other um, things that you're using it for. And also when you wipe it off, that color won't stain, right? So I'm gonna start off here with my pre-stretched side. So on here, I have my three bowls. So this is gonna be my three double A, and I'm using a black brush because that's gonna be my, my darkest, my base color. Then I have my three red violet, and I have a green brush because that's gonna be like my medium shade. And then I have my three RR, and this is gonna have a um, pink because it's it's the it's the reddish shade and it's gonna be my last shade. So when we're doing the matrix melt, matrix multi melt, matrix melt, color melt, we're always starting with the base color, right? And we're always starting with um, our anchor, right? So when we're doing this type of application, we are always gonna um, start up at the top of the head. Now, when you're doing a root application, what is what determines the size of the root? Think about it. How do you know how far out to create that base, that root color, right? Think of it. Let me know in the chat if you're if you're joining us live, right? Because as I go through and I start to create my base, what will determine the size of that? It's very simple. And I know many of you amazing. The size of the root that you paint on 
is going to depend on the effect you're looking to create. And that's going to be something you've discussed with your uh, client in your consultation, right? If you're looking to create a very large uh, rooted effect, a lot of depth, right? A lot of contrast, you're going to paint a larger size uh, root. If you're looking to create something, you know, very kind of soft, um, hey, Pamela from Wisconsin, I'm in Milwaukee, hey, is you're going to paint a very small. So again, the size of the, the base, the root, however you, um, uh, effect you're looking to create is going to depend upon you and the c consultation that you had with your client, right? If you want a big old root, you paint a big old root. If you want something very small and demure, you paint something very small. That's just going to be in your application. So I'm going to start my application up at the top. Now, since I'm working closest to the face, right, around the face, you want to create a lot of um, light. You want to usually keep lightness and brightness, right? So as I apply my rope, I'm going to start to outline my sections, right? And I'm going to keep feeding my brush. I always say, your brush should support the action of the brush, right? If your objective right now is to load product onto the hair, you need to make sure that your brush supports the loading of the product on the hair. Meaning, don't use a brush that looks like this, that's dry. Use a brush like this that's loaded with product, right? Because if you're looking for saturation, this is gonna give you saturation. A brush that's like this is gonna give you poor saturation, right? So make sure that every brush stroke has a purpose and has a new brush stroke with intention. So I'm gonna start applying and outlining my, um, hairline area. And if you notice, I'm keeping that um, root area very, very small. Also, one other thing I want you to notice is I, as I'm applying um, my product, as my brush goes into the hair closest to the scalp out, I'm almost flicking it out, right? That flick, flicking is gonna create um, a softer effect coming out and I'm not gonna start creating such heavy lines, right? So now for my application, I'm going to start working vertically. So you see, I'm going to work this way vertically like that. And again, I'm going to start applying saturate, flick out, saturate, flick out. Do you notice that line that I'm putting there? It's already very, very soft. When it comes to doing a melt, my rule is if you don't want to see a line in the hair, don't put it there in the first place, right? So we're gonna saturate and blend out. Saturate and blend out. And you can see as I'm getting closer, as I'm closer to the front of the head, I'm actually keeping um, my root a lot smaller. As I'm working back, now I'm getting a little bit further away from her fringe area, I'm going to now start to extend my root a little bit more, okay? Even though that, even though we're doing a color melt here, remember your application doesn't have to be the same. Taking vertical sections, by taking vertical sections, I'm ensuring that I, um, I'm able to work quicker. And also think of it, if I were to take traditional horizontal sections, if I were to take um, horizontal sections, as you overlap this hair up, you're gonna start contaminating the rest of the hair. So this way, look at how I'm able to move the hair side to side, and this hair isn't laying on top of uh, the head, or I'm not gonna um, smear this color on areas that I don't want it to. So for me, my vertical, not only does it help me work faster behind the chair, it also allows me easier application and as I go through. Okay. So I'm just pushing the hair. Now the top, remember the top of the head, I want this area to have a softer root effect. So I'm going to paint it softer. As I come out towards the, um, the ear and in the interior, you see how I'm extending out my root. Okay. So remember, keep in mind what area of the head we are applying color because it can be modified throughout your application. Right? And also, again, like Ashley said, what look are you going for? Right? Even though this is a very simple application, within that simplicity, we can definitely add some pizzazz to it. Right? So, once again, 
This is my three double A, three AA. So now I'm getting further back. I'm going to keep extending my, my application a little bit further because I want to start creating more depth, right? And also towards the back, she has a little bit of less highlight. Again, flicking my brush out, right? And remember, at the end of this, everything is going to be blended together. Ooh, I got the earbuds. Everything is going to be blended together, okay? Saturating, making sure that I, when I put product on, remember this is, in order to blend the product together, it needs to have enough product loaded so that you're able to support that blend. Right? Everything has a why. So you see, I keep taking product and really loading. My, my brush is supporting the action of my brush. And right now, the objective of my brush is to load. So you see, now I'm getting towards the back of the ear. So now I'm going to look at how much further out I'm going to extend it as I get here to her nape area. Do you see how that's really grown from smaller and it's gotten a lot wider towards the back, okay? I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna go back and continue with my matrix melt. Again, working with our brand new shade, Triple Blends, 3AA. Our new Triple Blend shades, 3AA, 3RV and 3RR, like I said, are part of our permanent color. So you're ideally gonna to wanna to use them when you're, um, when you're working with darker shades, 10 volume and 20, if you're dealing with any type of gray coverage. And that's the great thing is these three new shades, and I'll show you again for those of you who have just joined us. These are part of our new So Color portfolio. And these three shades can get intermixed with anything within your existing so color portfolio, right? Really nice, dark, rich, beautiful um, shades. Okay, so now once I did my application, right, so look at how now easily I can just come back to where I started my application and the hair is just laying naturally in its natural fall, right? Versus overlapping everything over the top. Right, so now I'm gonna come back to the beginning. So now, after I applied our base and the matrix melt, our application is gonna go base first, your darkest and your deepest, you're gonna create that root. Now we're gonna go through and apply our ends, right? For the matrix multi-melt, we do base, ends, then the mids. Why? The reason we do that is because think of it as you start to melt and stretch color and move it down, what happens to the ends of the hair. What happens when you're blending down colors, especially when you're going from dark to like, usually it goes into like a gradient of lightness. What tends to happen to the lightest color on the ends? We start to lose it, right? And think of it if we haven't done her haircut yet and you cut it, you're really gonna minimize the pop and the brightness on the ends. So if you feel like you always, yes, Tanisha, it gets darker and you lose it and you cut it off and you're wondering, you did all that work for what? So first you apply your base. Now we're gonna apply the lightest color, which is gonna be right here in our end. So we're able to protect them and preserve them, okay? So now I'm gonna just pick up the same sections. Like you can see the divisions that you applied your base color. Now I'm gonna take my three red red, right? Remember, I'm using a red brush to distinguish so that I can remember. Uh, that this is going to be our red red now again even though we're working with level three red red we're working on a canvas that has some lightness and brightness here right so I'm gonna start my application and my saturation at the ends of the hair saturating heavily right think of these ends if they're lighter they're gonna be thirsty if they're long, they're gonna be thirsty. Think of the ends of the hair usually are gonna be porous and they're gonna absorb the product. So again, make sure that your brush supports the action of that. And you wanna make sure that if that product is absorbing that product, I mean, if that hair is absorbing the product, I apologize, 
um, that there is enough product to support that absorption, right? I'm gonna let that fall. Now I'm gonna continue picking up sections. Now when I'm doing a matrix melt, if you notice, I'm not dragging the tail end of my brush through the hair. Why? Because imagine if I were to take my tail and drag it through the dark color all the way through the ends. I'm gonna start getting some of this dark color on the areas you don't want it. You're gonna create spots. You're gonna create stains in the hair, right? Hola, Omar. <laughs> so think of it, everything that we're doing, we're doing with intention. Look at all that saturated product. Now, when you're applying to the ends of the hair, look at where her lightness and brightness is. I'm actually gonna go a lot higher. Especially, think of it, I'm at the front of her face. Right? So I want to make sure that I don't lose all this, uh, this amazing brightness. Again, I'm going to pick up my next section that you can kind of already see that was divided from our base. You see that? How it's just already kind of uh, divided. Holding it straight out and I'm going to start to saturate. Again, this is my three red red matrix so color triple blends. And look at, I'm going way higher than where I want this color to live. So when I go through and I start blending, I don't stretch and lose this, right? I'm keeping the lightness and the brightness where it counts and where it matters. Taking my next section, see it's still divided. I can see that lightness, so I'm picking that up. And I'm gonna create that beautiful saturation. Really going heavily when it comes with my product, remember, your brush needs to support what that brush is doing, okay? If you're looking to load, that, pro that brush should be able to load product. If you're looking to blend, then that brush should be able to support that blending action, okay? Again, going back through. And the reason I applied the three red red on the ends of her hair is because our three shades at the make up at Matrix Soul Color Triple Blends is three ash ash, three red violet, and three red red. Okay, I wanted to go from cool to slightly cooler to warmer on the ends. So this is why I uh, where she had a lot of that lightness and brightness. I didn't want it to look opaque. I wanted to have a really beautiful reflect. So I'm gonna keep applying. So as you see, if you start getting towards the back, you have a little less of that highlight, that balayage. Again, I'm just picking up the section that I already had pre-section for my uh, base application, right? And when we, you're working with hair that has texture in this form, right? Look at that product versus the product I already applied. This is not gonna be enough. When that hair starts to absorb the product, eventually it's probably just gonna absorb it all. So then therefore your application is gonna look weak, right? At the end of it, your hair is gonna almost look like dusty because it didn't have enough product to deposit and look really beautiful and rich. So this is where you wanna make sure that again, like I said, you really are doing everything with purpose and intent. Here, look at how beautiful that saturation is and this hair depending on the porosity, as much as you might know the porosity of it, we don't know how this hair is gonna absorb this color and products. So you wanna make sure that you apply enough so that however it absorbs it, there's enough product on there. So we're gonna drop that down. So now we're gonna go back to our next shade. So once we did our base ends, now we're gonna do our mids. So now I'm gonna take a towel and just wipe, right? Cause now we're gonna work with our next shade. And you wanna make sure that we don't like cross-contaminate that we don't um, affect the color. In a color melt, what ends up happening is everything starts getting smeared together, right? And that's okay at the end, but when you do your application, you want your application, each color, to live true to its shade, right? Once we blend them together, that's when everything can kind of, you know, come together really beautifully, right? So now I'm gonna go next to my next shade, which is gonna be the three red violet. And let me see where's the front of her head. And I'm just gonna pick up, so you can see, you see where my sections are? Pick and move them back. Pick and move them back, right? 
Um, and just to remind for as many of you, because I see some amazing educators on here, on my mannequin, if you notice, on over her face and her neck, I actually applied Matrix Overachiever, three in one, um, throughout, all over her face, her ears, and her neck. So if you're using this mannequin, and not just for my educators, for many of you who own salons or work in salons, you wanna showcase really beautiful color, is this is a really great way that your mannequins don't get stained. When you wash it all off, you won't leave any stains behind. All right, so now I'm gonna take my, my first section. So you see I just held it over my hand. Now here, again, this is my 3RV. And look at my brush, look at all that product. That side has no product, this side has product. So now I'm gonna place all that product um, in the center, right? Again, loading that product up, front and back. I'm gonna let this product touch the top color and the medium color, okay? Now, with my fingers, this is where the blending is gonna happen. I'm not gonna blend with my brush, because what's gonna happen? If this brush that's applying my medium shade in the mids, if I start to blend the dark with the mids, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna contaminate and affect this color. If I blend this color, the mids to the ends, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a mess on this brush, right? So I'm no longer gonna preserve this color and maintain intact um, its really true uh, reflectiveness. So I'm gonna take my two fingers, I got five fingers, take your pointer finger, your middle finger, and you're gonna blend like scissors. See how I'm doing like my finger up and down, up and down, blending, blending, blending. So you wanna start getting that blending. Now you take your middle finger and your ring finger, your next two fingers, and you're gonna blend your, meat, your mids to your ends, right? Pulling up, pushing down, pulling up, pushing down, pulling up, pushing down. So then you're able to interchange between the base and the mids, mids and the ends. Base and the mids, mids and the ends. I'm gonna continue working through. If this is where if you wanna wipe in between, you can, but at this point, we're just going, um, by just using your fingers, you're not gonna really get any of that um, dark color on the rest of your glove. Apply color in the center. Remember, you want that color to, and I'll move my mannequin down so we can really see the application. So you want this color to touch the top and touch the bottom. We're not blending it yet. Right now, we're in application saturation mode, right? So now that I've got that really beautiful saturated, now I can take my fingers and blend up and down, up and down, smearing everything together, base and the mids. Take your next two fingers and you're gonna blend the mids with the ends. Stretching, stretching, okay? I'm gonna continue my application and literally picking up the little clumps that I've already have created for my previous application. I'm gonna take the next, making sure that I move the hair side to side so that I really get, look at all that amazing product. This color is really gonna shine at the end, not because the colors are beautiful, because they really truly are, but remember again, as hairdressers, we have the responsibility to apply this product Right? The products are great and they have a really beautiful end result. You know, Matrix creates, the, you know, for me personally, the best color. And, um, but it's up to me, the hairdresser, to apply it. To do the best application of that color, right? If not, that color will look at its best if I don't apply it at its best, right? Keep saturating, moving the hair side to side. And like I said, our three new shades are part of our So Color Permanent Hair Color Portfolio. And these are really great, beautiful shades. I have had the opportunity to use it on natural hair when someone wants to really stay a really, really true, rich brunette, but they wanna reflect some tone, right? Like I said, for that client, that they wanna stay really nice and dark, but they wanna take their uh, brunette to like a fun tone, right? So for me, like the 3RV, the 3RR are really great shades because you actually see the reflect meaning you don't need to go outside in the parking lot with a mirror to hope to see hope to hope you see the color, right? You're really gonna get that really true, beautiful reflect. And again, these three shades can be intermixed 
with anything else in our so color portfolio. Ideally, you're going to want to mix it with, you know, depending on your natural level and your consultation, 10 volume, but you can definitely use 20 if you're looking to get more shift or if you have any gray. It covers gray beautifully. I've had the opportunity to work with those as well. And I'm going to keep blending all the way through. So if you notice, I'm right now I'm just focusing on applying and doing some minimal blending because I need to get this color on so that it really starts to deposit right and blending blending very softly first but I'm getting my application in first right here's a little bit wide so I'm going to subdivide that right so with the matrix multi melt you're uh, we're blending base ends and mids but now I'm going base mids and ends creating that really beautiful blend my first two fingers my next two fingers I will be posting the after of this mannequin on my Instagram. So make sure that you follow me on Instagram and Facebook because you will be able to see the transformation on this fabulous mannequin blending, right? So once you do your final application, so you see I have everything applied. Now this is where I'm going to pick up the ends of the hair. And this is where I'm just going to use my hand and I'm really going to blend. If you feel like it's blended, okay, keep blending. It has to be blended fabulously, right? There's no such thing as over blending, right? At this point, the color has been applied where it needs to be applied. So everything is just going to get blended together. We've used three shades for our application, which is going to be 3AA, 3RV, and 3RR. But ideally, these three shades blended together are going to make five. Where the 3AA and the 3RV, they're going to blend and create a really um, beautiful, like, cool mesh of ash violet and red, of, of ash and red violet. Where the mids and the ends blend, we're going to create a really beautiful, like, melt of red violet and red red, right? So I, you're not going to see where one color ends and the next one starts. Everything's just going to be really beautifully melted together. Let me go through and you can see, look at my mannequin stayed intact with my little overachiever hat. Preserving that mannequin, right? So hopefully you enjoyed and you learned some really um, great tips and tricks for doing a, um, a color melt. Remember our amazing three brand new shades that are part of our triple blends collection that is part of our so color permanent uh, portfolio three ash ash three rv and three rr three amazing beautiful shades remember to stay two and two my instagram and my facebook because you'll able to see that really amazing beautiful reflect of the end result of the three beautiful shades so stay tuned thank you for joining me